If the person you are caring for has a gastrostomy tube, also known as a G-tube or a GT, you will be delivering formula and drugs directly into the stomach. With a jujostomy tube, also known as a J-tube or a JT, formula and medications are delivered into the small intestine. You may give both medication and feedings through a G-tube. Generally, you are only giving feedings through a J-tube. All medicines administered by this route must be in liquid form. If the medication is a tablet, it must be crushed and dissolved completely in water. If you have both types of medicine, those dissolved in water and liquid medication, give the medicine dissolved in water first, then the liquid medications, with the thickest liquids last. Be sure to flush the tube with 30 to 60 ml of water after administering all the medications. Note, not all medications should be administered through G-tube. An example is Nexium and Prolisec. Both of these medications must be dissolved in the small intestine for the drug to be effective. Steps for administering enteral medication. Gather all of the supplies you will need. Medication, a medicine cup for each medication you will be administering. A container with warm water used to dissolve the medications and for flushing before medications are given between each medication and after the medications are given. A device for crushing the pills. A calf-tipped 50 or 60 ml syringe. An extension tube if the GT is a button style or Mickey type. The MAR, the person who is receiving the medications. Wash your hands and put on gloves. For each person and medication, match the person and the medication to the person's name and the medications that are due on the MAR. Always use the five rights plus two each and every time you administer or supervise the self-administration of medication. Prepare the medicine for delivery by crushing the tablet, placing the powder in the medication cup, and dissolving the medication in water. Each cup should only have one medication in it. Never mix medications unless you have a doctor's order granting permission. Be sure the person is between the semi-fowler's position, which is 30 degrees of the elevation of the head, and the sitting straight up, 90 degrees of elevation of the head. Be sure your person is appropriately positioned in the bed, so his body is 30 to 90 degrees of elevation. Also, not just the bed. Place the tip of the catheter tip syringe in the GT port. Allow it to vent for a moment. You may get some digested formula back, or you may hear air escaping. This is normal. If you get residual formula, you will need to raise the syringe slightly, and it should go back into the stomach. Pour 30 to 60 ml of warm water into the syringe to irrigate the tube. If the tube does not flow, raise the syringe and change the angle from straight up and down to a tilt of approximately 45 degrees. Never use the plunger to force water, formula, or medication through the tube. It should flow into the stomach using gravity. If the water you are using for irrigation will not go in after raising and tilting the syringe, clamp the tube, dump the water out of the syringe, put the closure back over the end of the tube, and get help from the person who manages the G-tube to clear the blockage. When the tube has been irrigated, Slowly pour the medication into the syringe. If the medication is not completely dissolved, swirl the medication cup to be sure all of the medication is transferred into the syringe. The syringe will act as a funnel. Allow the medication to flow slowly through the tube. If it is going too quickly, lower the syringe. If it's going too slowly, raise the syringe slightly. When the medication is moved into the tip of the syringe, Add two teaspoons or 10 ml of water, allow it to move into the tip, and then add the next medication. Repeat the 10 ml flush and then the next medication process until you have given all of the scheduled meds. Flushing between medication doses avoids drug interactions. After all of the medications are administered, irrigate the tube with 30 to 60 ml of water. Clamp the tube and remove the syringe. Clean and store the equipment or dispose of as appropriate. Document the administration of the medication on the MAR. 
return the medication to its proper storage location. Important considerations. Be sure the person remains in an upright position for at least 30 minutes after any bolus of formula or administration of medications. If he or she is on a continuous feeding cycle, they must stay in the semi-fowlers to 90 degree position while the feeding is infusing. This will help the stomach to empty and help prevent esophageal reflux, which is the backward flow of stomach contents into the esophagus. Esophageal reflux in a person with impaired swallowing can cause the person to breathe fluids into the lungs. For people on continuous tube feedings, call the doctor to see if he would like you to turn the feedings off before, after, or both before and after the administration of medication via the G-tube. Some medicines, such as Dilantin, are altered by the feeding solutions in the person's stomach. Call the doctor if the person appears uncomfortable and the abdomen is hard. There may or may not be a fever present. One of the potential problems with a G-tube is displacement, so formula is going into the abdominal cavity rather than into the stomach. If this happens, it can lead to severe infections and potentially death. Possible displacement of the tube is the reason why we do not force fluids into the G-tube, rather fluids are allowed to go in by gravity. If the tube is displaced or clogged, generally the liquid will not flow by gravity alone. Remember, if the tube comes out for any reason, MAPS are not permitted to try to put the tube back in. If you ever have any questions about how to administer medication through the tube, or if the tube looks different, for instance, it's a G-tube, J-tube combination, and you're not sure which port to use, do not give the medication. Call your supervisor immediately so you may be trained on how to properly administer the medication for that specific tube. It is always best practice to take a look at the tube to be sure you know how to properly use it whenever you have a new client with a tube or if a new tube is inserted into your client. This can help prevent delays in medication administration if you need additional training. You are caring for Susie a 23-year-old female with cerebral palsy. She has a history of gastric reflux and difficulty swallowing. She receives her medications through the G-tube portion and Lucerna via her J-tube at 75 ml per hour for 20 hours a day. When irrigating her G-tube with 30 ml of water prior to giving medications, you find the water will not flow in. You have lifted the syringe and tilted it at an angle to no avail. What should you do next? Perfect! Never use the plunger to force water, formula, or medication through the tube. It should flow into the stomach using gravity. If the water you are using for irrigation will not go in after raising and tilting the syringe, clamp the tube, dump the water out of the syringe, put the closure back over the end of the tube, and get help from the person who manages the G-tube to clear the blockage. Possible displacement of the tube is the reason we do not force fluids into the G-tube, rather fluids are allowed to go in by gravity. If the tube is displaced or clogged, generally the liquid will not flow by gravity alone.